Our next guest calls the confirmation hearing yesterday for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh a display of mob rule by Democrats. Judicial Crisis Network's Carrie Severino says, quote, Judge Kavanaugh is a highly qualified nominee and a mainstream judge who follows the law and adheres to the Constitution, and that's why Democrats are so frustrated and hysterical. Carrie Severino from Judicial Crisis Network joins us now. Carrie, welcome back to the program. Great to be here. These proceedings are very partisan. Rhode Island Democrat Sheldon Whitehouse specifically mentioned ads run by your group in favor of Judge Kavanaugh as an example of the influence of big money in this confirmation process. Your response? Well, look, there's groups like Planned Parenthood on the other side who started running ads against this nominee starting the first day of his hearings. Our organization's mission is to be out there to defend judges who are in favor of the Constitution and the laws as they are written. And so we are out there to combat that misinformation about Judge Kavanaugh and make, people, make sure people understand his real record on the bench. Should there be more transparency in terms of who's funding these ads? Oh, well, our group, like groups like Pan Parenthood, the ACLU, the NAACP, we protect the confidentiality of our donors. And it's obvious to see why when you see some of the attacks uh, that get launched, as particularly against people on the conservative side of the bench. Uh, but uh, we also think that the most important thing here is really the judge's record, and that's what we should be debating. So, um, so I think that'll speak for itself. Let's take a look at his record and talk a little bit about the hearing. Judge Kavanaugh says his personal beliefs are not relevant. Senator Dianne Feinstein this morning asked if Roe versus Wade was correct law and if he would try to overturn it. She answered by, he answered, sorry, by saying it is settled law. How are his answers on abortion being perceived? Well, you have to take his answers in the context of how judges, according to ethical rules, are allowed to comment on cases. And they have to be very careful not to forecast what they would do in a case that's not before them, but that's likely to come before them. They can't pre preview how they think they would, they would rule or they'd have to recuse themselves in the case. That's the standard that all the sitting members of the Supreme Court applied uh, during their confirmation hearings, and that's the standard Judge Kavanaugh has applied. So he can, he can mention, yes, this is a case. Yes, it's been standing for 40-some years now, uh, but he, we, we, he can't give us a, a view as much as many people want to hear it of what he would do if it came back before the court. He also didn't address whether a president can be forced to testify in a criminal case, calling it a hypothetical. Was that a fair question in light of the Mueller investigation? And why not answer the question again if as he says, no one is above the law. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think his record shows clearly that he does not believe anyone's above the law. When you look at his tenure on the court immediately following being appointed by President Bush, he, he had two and a half more years of the Bush administration, during which he overturned Bush uh, regulations wrote and, and uh, went against the Bush administration position in eight different cases. So he doesn't believe anyone's above the law, but precisely because it's an issue that is very likely to be litigated in uh, the lower courts if in, in possibly make it to the Supreme Court, he simply can't comment on it. So I know it's frustrating for people on the outside, but if you look at his record, that is what really we can see, okay, how has he behaved with these cases in the past? And you can see he's someone who takes very seriously the idea of setting politics aside and looking at where the law and the Constitution leads you, whether that leads you, you know, in, in favor of or opposed to the president that appoints you. Let's go back to the circus. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said that within the first hour and 18 minutes after Judge Kavanaugh's nominations, Democrats decried it. What will it take to restore this process to a review of these judicial qualifications rather than political theater? Yeah, it has been theater. During the first hour, 44 different times, Senate Democrats interrupted Senator Grassley. He was not even able to start his opening statements or finish his first sentence for an hour, practically. And there were 70 people arrested. And, you know, every few minutes, they stand up in the back, they shout something, you know, keep your hands off my body or something, and then they get dragged out. Um, it's, it's unfortunate because we have a First Amendment so we can have reasoned debate about these things. And also, when, we, when you have a Senate trying to conduct hearings, uh, I think there needs to be some respect of the of the process. What's discouraging to me too is seeing that the Senate Democrats have not only not criticized that with with a couple rare exceptions, but have actually been encouraging that in many cases. I hope that we can get back to talking about the nominee because they really have I think have recognized his record is so stellar. It's so widely respected by by litigators, by um, academics across the legal spectrum. They'd they'd rather talk about other topics, including 
people shouting in the background than having uh, Judge Kavanaugh really on display. Carrie Severino, Chief Counsel and Policy Director for Judicial Crisis Network. Thanks for joining us, Carrie. Great to be here.